Hello, uh, Mike Karaginis here in Mali uh, from Freedom Physical Therapy Services. Part of the thing that we wanted to cover today a little bit is what role can a physical therapist play in assessing sleep uh, to what degree maybe uh, disturbed sleep or sleep disordered breathing could contribute to things like headaches, chronic pain, uh, temporal mandibular disorders, but a lot of times it can lead to a, a, a myriad of other related issues that someone else might be dealing with. So again, this isn't going to be incredibly comprehensive, but just give you a little snippet of what we might do. So one of the things that's very easy for us to do as clinicians, and again, there's different testing and different questionnaires, but a pretty well accepted one and one that's easy to apply for people is the Epworth uh, Sleepiness Scale. So for example, this is just a series of simple questions where you would ask someone, as you ask the question, you know, might you ever doze during the day? Is there a slight chance you might doze during the day, a moderate chance, or a high chance? So as we would go through this right now, let's say, if you were to listen and want to answer these questions as we go along, you know, when you're sitting or reading during the day, what's the chance that you might doze off? Other question would be, while you're watching TV, what's the chances, right? You know, almost none to maybe a high probability you'd fall asleep. What about if you're sitting inactive in a public place like a theater or a meeting? If you're lying down to rest in the uh, afternoon, would circumstances permit, would you easily doze off? Uh, if you were just sitting and talking to someone, have you ever just even subtly caught yourself uh, nodding off or dozing off? If you were sweating, uh, sitting quietly after a lunch without alcohol, and then the final one would be if you're in a car and you're stopped for a few minutes, let's say at a super long traffic light, do you ever catch yourself dozing a little bit? And, and certainly, if ever at night, you know, the concern of just uh, nodding off or dozing off while, while driving. So it's a simple screen. And then within that, a lot of times it's not uncommon. Then we'll ask someone, like, has your spouse or significant other ever indicated that you snore at night? Yeah. Um, do you think you tend to breathe with your mouth open at night? Or do you think you breathe through your nose? Uh, and then you would inquire those questions. And that might lead you to consider if they can't breathe through their nose, is it because maybe they have allergies, whether it's environmental or pet? Um, are they chronically maybe sick or have some other issues or severe sinus issues? And then other questions might be like restless leg syndrome. Do you ever notice uh, that your legs might move uncontrollably at night? And of course, the more severity would be, you know, has your spouse or significant other ever indicated that maybe you stopped breathing and you woke up gasping for breath? So again, just gives you a rough idea uh, but it's a wonderful way to screen and tease out and look at some of these things. And then from a, an oral facial aspect of things and the temporal mandibular joint, right, especially in children but also adults, uh, we really want to make sure their airway, especially when they're younger. Uh, you've heard me talk about this in some other, <coughs> excuse me, other uh, conversations, is to assess their airway um, uh, for maybe tonsils, um, you know, that, that type of thing, or narrowing in the back of the throat, there's something called the Malin Potty score that we would rate and look at. So one device I love to use, it's just called the throat scope. So it's really like a, a plastic clear acrylic tongue blade, but what's wonderful is I can hook it up with this portable LED, and then I can have, uh, in this case, Molly open for me a little bit. One thing I can do, first of all, is I can assess the inside of her cheek on each side, Sometimes we look for any ridging that could be inside the cheek that maybe somebody's sucking on the inside of their cheek or biting down, which could be a sign of something we call a parafunction. Uh, of course, what is nice about this device, too, is, and I, and I think it doesn't probably get done enough, other than I'm sure when you go to your dentist, is to just look for any oral lesions or concerns. So possibly you might pick up any early signs of... Um, you know, any kind of, you know, God forbid, cancer uh, thing or any or a lesion of just general concern. And then the big thing would be to have them uh, open as wide as they can, keeping the tongue down. Sometimes you can make them say, ah, if they're having a hard time and you want to make sure they don't gag, but ah. And what I'm looking for, which we're going to show you in a different way, will be to see if you can look pretty clearly down the back of somebody's mouth area. I always say it's like you have two tunnels, the right side and the left side. The little punching bag in the center, as I call it, is your uvula. And then on the extremes, you're going to want to see if someone might have swollen tonsils, one side, you know, or both sides. In Molly's case, that's not her situation. Uh, and then the other thing you tend to look at, too, is the width of the tongue. So what I'm looking for, which, again, you really can't see from your perspective, is the width of somebody's tongue 
in relation to the width of their lateral pharyngeal walls, which I know probably gets a little complicated, but basically we want to be, if we can, as wide open back there as we can, so we have a, a really good airway, and then more importantly, the ability to be able to breathe uh, well through our nose. So, uh, and then of course that might lead you to, like especially with a child, it allows you to look at their upper maxillary arch, and really what we would like to see is a very nice, uh, broad, wide uh, arch versus something very narrow, high and vaulted. That would let us know that while they're growing and developing that their tongue has been able to be in that upper arch area and they're sealing their airway here but breathing through their nose. When you are a mouth breather and you are either congested due to tonsils and allergies and you can't breathe through your nose, your mouth will open at night or during the day, your tongue will drop down and now your tongue is not doing its job to expand your upper arch during those very crucial growth and development years as children and adolescents. So I'm going to switch this out now for uh, something pretty cool that this company uh, from Holland Healthcare has sort of pro progressed the throat scope now uh, into um, something that we can attach to our phones and uh, it will give me the ability to take some photos and in this case uh, you know or video. So and it allows me to zoom in and out but so here now I can take an actual look. So I'm going to have Molly, she's going to drop her tongue down for me. Good. It'll give me a chance to get in there. Open a little wider if you can. Drop your tongue, tip your head back for me. So let's just give you a little glimpse. And then I'm also going to record now. But at least I can get an idea in here. So go ahead and say ah. Uh. And again, there we go. Whoop, one more time. So at least you can start to see a little bit. One more time, Molly. You can get a little idea. So, you know, in Molly's case, you know, she, she does have sort of a Malum Potty 3 or 4 scale, um, but then also um, narrowing. So the walls on both sides uh, were a little bit narrow than the width of her tongue, but she's already indicated to us that she, you know, she doesn't snore at night and doesn't appear to have... Uh, you know, sleep disordered breathing. But again, these are just some of the signs and things we look for. Again, uh, as humans, right, we can have one or two problems and everything is fine. But maybe if you get a culmination of three or four different factors going on at the same time, you might now develop some symptoms. So thanks for the opportunity for us to share kind of how as physical therapists we would look at and assess, you know, sleep related issues and sleep disordered breathing and improving your airway. Thank you.